we're back in Bangor. We certainly are. And uh, because we're back and there's not much sailing going on. Well, the weather here can be a bit problematic and it's nice enough today, but sometimes it can look like this. Um, it just means that we haven't done any sailing and we've not done anything else really, have we? Beth? No, because to be fair, we've had quite a bit of blowy weather. A blowy days in Bangor have been back. Plenty of those. <laughs> but that gives you, the viewers, the opportunity to give us a couple of dozen topics. No, a dozen, not a couple of dozen. We've got 12 weeks or thereabouts until the new sailing season. Yeah. Uh, and we want to, to fill that content with what you, the viewers, want to see. Exactly. So this is our last episode of 2023 because we'll be taking a little break for Christmas. So have a little think about what topics you'd like us to do for the Winter Talks for 2024, the first quarter. And we will see you again in 2024. Absolutely. But we're rounding off this video with some of the highlights and possibly... Definitely low lights. lights <laughs> from our trip this round Ireland this year. But in the meantime, I think we'll just say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from all of us in Salty Lass. Well, to me, apart from the corners, the tack and the uh, clue and the, um, the head, I think the rings need reinforcing. But other than that, it looks in pretty good shape, really. Yeah, all this, this is the area. Uh, and obviously the top that I need to sort out but for a light wind sail that's going to be all right well Beverly and I are very encouraged uh, the sail is in a a lot better condition than we thought it would be um, you know because it's been in the Viber for over a year now um, and um, I think I can do it. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I've just finished um, uh, my, my sail uh, repairs. Well, see, we're investigating parts of the boat we don't normally investigate, Bev. Absolutely. It's, um... We've had some problems with our water pump for some time now. Um, occasionally it'll just go brrrp all by itself. And um, what we have tied it down to, the only explanation that makes sense to us, is that the valves that separate the low pressure side of the circuit from the high pressure side of the circuit have failed. Yes. Right, so we've got the pump down here beside us. It's 12 volts, like the pump we have. It does 10.6 litres per minute, same as the one we have. It's a 30 PSI pump, same as the one we have. The big difference, like I say on this one, it's four and a half amps. That one in the back is seven amps. The model number is slightly different. They're both from SureFlow. They both appear to have the same fitting, the hoses all appear to be in the same place. So I have great hopes that I'm literally going to undo four bolts in there, take these fittings off, plug it in and do four bolts back up. It's a boat job, it won't work that way, but I'd like to hope that that's how it's going to come out. So Bev, how did the um, fitting the pump go? <sighs> well, the pump is fitted. Um, there's a distinct lack of footage of the fitting process because you don't really want to see me screwing screws in with a screwdriver it's not really a very exciting video uh, the exciting bit happened later when I turned it on as a test thing and water sprayed out absolutely everywhere because we must have lost a grommet on one of the fittings and it took me quite a bit of hoking around and the boat was in uproar because I had every cupboard out looking for a grommet of the right size I finally found one and put it in that fixed that problem and then it turned out that the other end of the hose that I was fighting with the grommet had disturbed it and upset the fitting there so I had to take it all off and reset it and I got soaked, the boat got soaked, I had to clean it all out. I'm afraid filming took a rather bit of a back seat in that one. Well, 
this is a moment of truth. Uh, Beverly's um, put the stripper on the other side. So I'm just going to sort of see if it works the way I want it to work. I'm not too sure really. It is stripping the way we want it to strip. But it feels like the line is crossed. Yeah, I find it a bit awkward when I tried it. Yeah, Beverly found it a bit awkward, didn't you, Bev? Should we should we put it facing forward so that when you put the line on, it's at the side here, and you, you can you can jam it in before you wrap it on the knuckle? Um, yeah, if as long as you say that to camera. But um, I just did. Oh, okay. So which camera were you be talking well, to? Well, that that one there. I'm not quite in the shop, but the, the, oh, okay. So fair the, enough. The, the word the words were clear enough. Okay, fair enough. Well, you look like a pixie. Put your hat to. <laughs> right. Well, in that case then, if you think it's easy, you sort it out. Okay. So that just needs to be gripped. <laughs> Within a second. Whoa! You didn't use your um... I didn't use my catcher. You didn't use your catcher, did you, Dafty? Okay. Right, so the stripper's now in a different place. So it's in a different place, so let's try that for, for size. <laughs> Beverly did not use her patented... Oh, that's going to winch much better, Bev. Yeah. Yes. No, it, it comes round here. But it's still, on, it's still in the boat. Yeah, okay. It's not going over the side or anything. It is coming into the cockpit. Yeah, it goes round and back. The other option would be to have it facing inboard. Okay, well let's try that. Oh, let's try it again. Just do two knots. Round. Okay, where's my winch handle vanished? It's over there, Beverly. Got it. That feels like a better angle. That'll be perfect, because look, this is going to come like that. Yeah. So I know you feel feeling dejected, Bev. Despondent, not dejected. Oh, you think it's just that the um, Strangford Lockers uh, rejected us? If we had failed to get in here, down by Angus Rock and Bar Flatty. Fair enough. But to get to the point where I can read the writing on the hotel and then find out that we just can't do the last half mile, no matter how hard we push things. Yeah, because we increased the engine revs, didn't we? We had the engine at max. Yeah. And we were going backwards at some tiny amount quarter of a knot, something like that. As soon as we turned round we were doing 12 knots. Yeah, I've got a very interesting uh, weird pattern on the chart table, haven't I Bev? I have no idea. I haven't looked. I don't care. I'm just despondent. It gets so close. Missing to Worcester at the moment. Oh, we're turning into two right wasses, haven't we? <laughs> but it's been so long since we've done any sailing that when the boat's over at 10 degrees, we feel like we're hanging on by our fingertips. 10 degrees, that's nothing. That's normally what we aim for.
thought it was hilarious. Um, I said I wanted to go on um, the inside of the pontoon, not even thinking about the wind. Huh. I was thinking more about the little boats because I remembered from last time that they're, they're quite close um, to the pontoon and I just didn't know how close they were. We could have easily got Salty Laughs down, no problem there, but they are quite close, the moorings here. Uh, yeah. Oh God. So the wind was blowing us off and I it was a right hoo-ha. I had to get her off at the front of the boat. Well, Beverly and I are sailing. But I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone, but the engine's still on. Now, it's in neutral, uh, but it's still on. Just because Beverly is and ours, apprehension level is quite high at the moment. Um, when I was doing the passage plan around um, the point and everything, I had said to Beverly, right, okay, we'll be leaving a bit later. But we could see in the weather app that the um, weather was going to deteriorate the longer we slept. So um, I decided, right, okay, we're going to seize the moment and um, we're going to go. Um, you know, we'll be fine. So seize the moment, that's fair enough. But now uh, we're actually outside Kilmore Quay uh, because we can't get in. Uh, because we haven't got enough tide so I'm actually in the weather that I wanted to avoid so I've still I've got white caps to the side of me uh, and that's why we've got the engine on is just there's days that you just feel <sighs> that things are against you well Beverly and I are back in Kilmore Quay it's not quite as warm this time as it was last year, is it? Absolutely not. Which is why I've got my coat on and she's got her big fleece on. <laughs> and I've gone one stage for and kept my woolly hat on. <laughs> I have to be honest, uh, coming over, we were still in mullions. We were. Um, because the weather is still pretty cold. When it's the moment, it's very difficult to film because your tempers are a bit <sighs> frayed and stuff like that. Particularly mine, I'm very good at getting frayed. But Beverly's temper gets very frayed. <laughs> but um, you've come to, to see with no regulator. No spare regulator. No spare regulator. This is crisis on Salty Lass. No tea! Oh my god. Okay. 
I did it. Hey! Oh my god. So quick in the moment. Oh. <laughs> Honest to goodness. What a dafty. But what the hell? That's me for you. Oh. Well, it's all go here on Salty Lass. Um, Beverly is currently trying to fix our impeller, uh, whereas my task is uh, to keep Salty Lass going under sail. Well, at the minute I'm sailing the boat, uh, Gainers downstairs doing intrepid engineering things, and um, we've found out the cause of it. It's a plate that is sheared, but we'll talk about that when we get into Baltimore. <laughs> Yeah, we're in Baltimore, in Baltimore Harbour. Well, it's a uh, very windy, bumpy day here in Baltimore. Um, it's the roughest I've seen the Anchorage since we've got here. We've been here for over a week now. Yeah, another Atlantic weather system has come in. We've been stuck here in Baltimore for the best part of two weeks now with weather. Well, it's an awful day. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely foul out there. The uh, the weather is um, absolutely crazy. Well, we're back in Baltimore because there's going to be a few storms going on uh, in the next few days. In fact, the winds are already starting to rise, aren't they, Bev? This is the storm. Well, I know, but it is a storm. But um, it's yeah. four seven gusting it. Yeah, maybe it is the storm. Well, it's decisions, decisions, isn't it, Bev? It is, and we have been trawling through all sorts of weather forecasts this morning, and one blindingly obvious conclusion has just slapped us in the face, hasn't it? Well, the problem is, um, today, uh, we can go north. Fantastic. And um, But as the weather goes on and continues, there's yet another storm coming with yet another I-don't-want-to-know conditions. Mm. Um, coming through and it's going to be slapping the um... it's going to be rough for the next week again once again like, it, like I've often said on this channel I don't believe the detail of the forecast but I do believe in their generalities and the general forecast for the next week isn't particularly good so we're just going to scarper as quickly as we can and do you know what our blog is literally about what really happens and what it's really like Sometimes I would like a little bit less reality. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if the fantasy came to, came to visit, wouldn't it? It'd be great. Right, definitely going now. Yeah, well, it looks like we've got something around the prop. Well, are you ready, Bev? No. So how many... Uh, Wetsuits do you have on? Oh, it's a double thickness wetsuit, this one. Yeah, that has got Perhaps mine on. Perhaps the correct on. way to put it would be it's a double suit thickness wetsuit. Because I've got mine on and then Gainer's over the top because she takes a 16 and I take a 14. And my 14 brings me up to a 16 so I can put hers on on the top. Get in, but uh, we sing just the 40 knots and uh... 
recognise it. Oh, yeah. Lovely, and I have motor sailing. Yeah, we've got uh, two the Jenny, two in the main. Um, we always have short sails at night because if the wind gets up, you don't want to be overpowered. Uh, the sun has just set. We have now set our course for the North Channel, and it'll take us just outside Rockaville. And um, we're hoping that also takes us outside the pots. As far as we can see, all the pots are in there. and I honestly I personally thought that I did my best to be away from a particular mooring ball that one there that, <laughs> <laughs> that one that's just right next door to us but uh, these phantom mooring balls sneak up on you don't they <laughs> <laughs> and yeah the phantoms yeah but oh, we're off today and uh, honest to goodness, it just feels like this is a long journey home. It is a long journey, but I think that's the Moran Mountains over there, so we can see Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh my goodness, we can see Northern Ireland. Yeah. So, yeah, today's job is pick up the anchor, get out there, raise the sails and carry on. Absolutely. Absolutely.